How's it going? Uh, getting into this, getting into this box. Um, I find every time I um, every time I go to it, uh, there might be a little patch, little you know pattern, little sounds going going along, and then um, you know it just you can't stop kind of tweaking it. Um, this was something very more I don't know more abstract before. Um, it is still quite abstract now actually, but it was a lot more slow and broken and weird and I was like nah, I'm not really kind of liking this and just a few tweaks here and there and all of a sudden it just emerges um, at least for me so yeah kind of um, yeah this box is cool this box is cool I keep saying it um, if you have the ability to get hold of one um, give it give it a try get in the shop and have a play around with it is there many in stores actually it's a good point um, I wouldn't I don't really see any around uh, around London so um, but yeah, um, what have we got going on? Some basic, um, I think it's like pretty much the same machine. I think one of them has like it maybe a different machine on one of the steps. I might have deleted it though. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, it's the same machine across all of them. I think it's the kick on this one. Um, yeah, and the kick on this one, I'm guessing. It is, yeah, so, <laughs> um, again, just like there's a lot of like, um, sculptability in just that sound i think uh i was kind of playing around with the reverb more in this one just um you haven't got the kind of pre-delay uh on the reverb like you have on the rhythm which i really really love because you can kind of offset um uh like how the reverb basically how long it takes for the reverb to kick in right but um that offsets the rhythm is kind of the point i was going to make that you can kind of get this sort of like um, uh, like a negative or like a remnants of something like kind of spilling around in the background which I find really really nice this reverb's like fixed it's kind of like kicks off of the sound pretty much immediate um, there is some uh, um, like texture and you can kind of play around with the tone a little bit uh, and I kind of wanted to explore like that with like the the this the kind of like the length you know like the infinite kind of reverb wash because the rhythm's kind of got that and it's sort of um this has got a very different quality to it it just feels a much calmer kind of more ambient sort of i don't know like an empty you know like in a like i don't really go clubbing much but i always imagine like in a in the big warehouse kind of club where it's just sort of not many people in there yet and um it just kind of got those sounds just spilling across the space a bit more it obviously doesn't sound like that it sounds as echoey shit but you know the image of that sort of like um when you're in those kind of big cavernous spaces and things just kind of spilling around it feels like that kind of reverb um the delays a little the delay kind of reminds me of the old sort of bucket brigade style delays that are just like um uh that you know you kind of hear quite a lot but this one's got that kind of boingingness which like i find is somewhat lacking in a lot of delays they kind of have a more um like i don't know sort of a more like color eight colored version of the sound and they they like they all do but they kind of that seems to be the thrust of it is sort of like a I don't know like it's got its own kind of weight to it whereas i quite like some of the old ones so i had this old inkle mic inkle inkle mixer um really cheap shit thing but it had this delay on it that was kind of really short and boingy um and you just can't i just can't get that sound in anything else it's kind of funny i kind of got rid of the mixer but um it was just a massive bloody bulk of you know wood and crackly sliders um that delay was cool though that was kind of the reason i bought it but it's just too big to keep around but yeah it kind of reminds me of that a little bit which is kind of neat um uh yeah the, this sort of track texture sketch whatever is sort of um i don't know it's sort of you can kind of hear like the tom like kind of um you know drum like acoustic drum sort of modeled sounds that you often get with sort of fm based stuff this sort of um tim bell or this sort of um you know cowbell -y kind of rim shotty kind of quality often comes through um i'm always kind of a bit hesitant to go in there and it can quite easy and this has kind of got that but i think i don't know it's got enough kind of grit i guess to kind of move away from that um, there's nothing wrong with that sound but i don't know it kind of ends up being a bit too sort of delicate and and uh, acoustic i guess it kind of sounds acoustic and i'm typically someone who does more electronic stuff but yeah kind of liking it you know you can kind of go from those short sort of acoustic sort of 
um, you know, the skin of a drum sort of sound and then the decays and things just to sustain it, to create that sort of, uh, this isn't a real drum sound, it's abstract, it's electronic. So I quite like those sort of moments where you have something that's like, um, seems acoustic and then just sort of transforms, you know, kind of shifts your perception somewhat, which is quite cool. Um, but yeah, like, uh, I think this one's got lots of, um, I had lots of notes in here and I just deleted them all because it was just too busy. Um, it reminds me of some crappy film I saw where the composer said you use too many notes, which I thought was quite amusing. Um, it was like a classical thing and classical music. I'm not a big fan of classical music and it has too many notes in it. <laughs> um, I guess I need to find a way in maybe, but yeah, there's a few things that are kind of nudged to kind of create some, uh, um, some interesting movement, um, giving sounds space to kind of do their thing. Um, but yeah, um, really just playing around again, just trying to find, just, it's trying to, I'll tell you what it feels like. It's like you've got this, you've just got these parameters that are easily accessible and you're just trying to, you're just trying to usher them out somehow. You're just trying to find like where it is. It's, it's both sonically complex and rhythmically possible, like all in one box. It's a real intricate, in, interconnected sort of thing. Um, it's quite interesting to use like um for those of you who think way too much which i would probably put myself in that camp um really enjoying it really enjoying it i think um oh there is a per percussion one in there yeah so um i mustn't have been pushing the buttons hard enough because they are made of uh superman um impossible to penetrate with your mere fingers um yeah I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Um, I'm going to do some more stuff for this one. I think um, I'm really missing the rhythm, though. I think I'm going to have to sort of do something in the rhythm after I've used this a few times, just to see. Um, it just I don't know. It just feels so weird, right? It's just like parameters and a sequencer, and it's built by the same company, and yet um, oh, we've knocked a dial. There we go. Built by the same company, but yet it just it just I can't I can't create the same sort of stuff on it. I'm trying to kind of um I don't know, I'm trying to create like approach it with the same sort of maybe methodologies and ideas and then I'm just like, oh I can't really do that quite the same way it, and, and it doesn't kind of behave the same way because it's FM because you haven't got like low pass filters like that classic subtractive synth style. Um it's FM on dials, which is um pretty interesting. I have like a um, a DX7, DX100 behind me that has, you know, like they have like one data entry dial. So you kind of have to like key in all your parameters using like the, um, uh, like the, uh, the membrane buttons on a DX7. And then you have like, um, like a diagram that tells you, <laughs> uh, if you, if you are to look at it, like tells you kind of like the different algorithms you can use and, and kind of how like the curves work on the envelope and that kind of stuff. Um, and it sort of feels, um, it's, it, yeah, it feels weird. It feels kind of quite a uh, different process to this, different um, different headspace than this. Um, and I find the, the DX7, DX100, DX100 is actually easier to use. Um, I think it's just slightly simple on the envelopes, but uh, both of them really, you kind of need to put, just like seem to just put some sounds into them and then just start moving the parameters around and then finding stuff that sort of works. I think is um, the way I like to use them. You can kind of create like, um, well, you can create anything, but you can kind of like play and then kind of adjust and play and adjust, which, you know, it takes a lot longer, but for something immediate and quick, just whacking a sequence going and then putting a bunch of notes in like, and then just kind of changing around the parameters. Um, and this kind of has that, but it's, uh, um, it's more like yeah it's like it's just the, it's just the electron sequences isn't it it's just just being able to dial in all those little bits and you can really get um you can just get into the weeds with it which is um can be can be good can be bad like gets a little bit too particular so i'm kind of i'm kind of interested to see like over more version you know more times i've spent with this that the kind of um the complexity will just get stripped away i find i find like my old rhythm um uh, and maybe it might be worth listening back to some of the old rhythm videos even, but um, they're kind of like a bit like too complicated. Now, even 
I mean, <laughs> I often use that one sound, but for me, there's like, there's a little bit too much nudging here and nudging there, trying to make those parameters kind of work. And then it ends up being more of a, like a kind of a listening experience. And it is like a sort of an energized set of sounds, like an energized track. So, um, in they're both fine, but I kind of quite like that when it really stands out. Like the first thing I did on this was really aggressive and abrasive and, and, uh, sort of more in your face and then since then it's been a little bit like meandery and kind of like oh that's interesting um you know it's kind of a fascinating sound but um i'm not getting that punch in the face that i like yet so i think that's probably i think that's probably like most cases when i use like new when you use new equipment you're just trying to find like like you're kind of shining a torch around the insides, right? Trying to find like where's where are these little sweet spots between these parameters and these little patterns because you've got a lot of you know a lot of things going on at once, like different pitches, different parameters. It's not just like you know make a kick drum. Well, I don't know, like some you know a lot of people use it that way. Make a kick drum, make a snare drum, make a beat. But that's not how I use stuff. Um, to trying to find like where are the edges. Um, where are the combinations? Where are those little like dark areas within this box that start kind of emerging that I can kind of really explore and, and manipulate? Like you know, you know, I've noticed when uh, you know making the length lengths of notes short and then colliding things with the nudge, um, weird things happen and the glitching out in ways that I wouldn't have expected, um, which is really cool. Uh, I think that's yeah, that's probably what isn't coming across in a lot of the sound experiments that maybe you're listening to is uh with these videos it's like maybe you like them but uh it's that kind of um it's the exploration part that's sort of interesting so i don't know maybe i do maybe i do um do a video that's kind of from scratch and just kind of working on one sound and just finding where those little weird nuggets are um and then maybe tracks will be a bit more simple like the fact that i've got two tracks going and, and like i don't know it's feels um feels feels uh fussy feels fussy feels like i'm getting dressed to go to some bloody dance or something with a suit you know like I've, i might look it might sa it like look smart but you feel like really uncomfortable at least i do <laughs> um but yeah they don't let you in naked do they but <laughs> um yeah uh I'm, I'm super excited to kind of try some more stuff um and and uh and reflecting just as i'm recording these has been is sort of is both difficult head scratching and and fascinating at the same time so i hope you are kind of enjoying it and if you're not then you know tune into some other channel isn't it it's like it's the way it works <laughs> I've, I've i get you get the occasional um negative comment and you're like mate just like change the fucking channel <laughs> it's like, reminds me of this old tv program when i was a kid and you'd have uh people would write in it was i don't for years of you in the uk it was called points of view right and you would british people used to write in and then complain about some tv channel they watch so they'd have to watch the whole bloody program and then complain about it and, and just and there was a program dedicated to people complaining about tv like only in fucking england does you nothing but um anyway i digress um yeah excited um i'm gonna leave it here uh and uh i'll see you in the next one nice one